What is going down everybody? It is your boy Zary and before we get into the video I just want to remind everybody if you're under level 15 and you want $10 worth of free stuff go to your settings go to use promo code and type in XMG gifts. You do that you'll get $10 worth of free stuff it helps support the channel. So if you're under level 15 make sure you're using that promo code XMG gift. Enjoy the video. All right, my YouTube family, we are back and we are going to talk a little bit about words to first, 20 through number 11. And we're going to jump right into it. We're going to get cracking on these characters. We have two episodes left in this series and then it's over with. So we're going to start with number 20. Number 20 is Ember. Ember is a legendary unlock and I, I really like Ember. She's a really good character. She just received some changes in the, the most recent update there and she is a really really good character and i'm kind of torn between the changes some of them i really like and some of them i don't you know she now has this inner flame inner fighter ability and i call it inner flame i call it a whole bunch of different things but inner fighter is the actual name of it and it and it cranks up her damage and it really really helps her do work and you know, what I don't like about Ember, though, is on her Spirit of Zai Nile, she lost her Dispel mechanic. You know, now she only has a single target Dispel. She can remove three buffs from the target, but it takes down her and fires. So it can be beneficial, but that, that AoE kind of Dispel was really, really solid. I'm kind of upset they did take that away from her. But again, I mean, she's just a really, really good character. She comes in with really good speed at 160 to start. She has a stun ability on that Meteor with the Dispel. Um, the pairing her with the late combination is really good. Her health and shield combination for a mage is pretty good, coming in at 48k, almost 49k. So she is pretty survivable. You know, um, her potency... Her potency here is at 33, so that isn't bad to start at all. I mean, Ember does need potency, you know, um, for that stun stick and things like that. So her mechanics kind of, she lost the mass dispel, but she gained some other things. Um, I, did, I did rank her last time at 17. She's still a top 20 character for me, but that panda team is just kind of incomplete at the moment, so that's why she falls at number 20. Number 19 for me is Thanisa. Now, Thanisa is a really good character, and I haven't started working on it yet. This is my account, and um, she is on the list to be brought up here shortly. But she is a really, really good character with a lot of plug-and-play viability. She does have a couple problems off the bat before we get into her move kit. You know, her speed's at 135 to start. Healing, still, you want her to go fast. That is a big problem. But her health and shield combination is just below 50k. So she's pretty survivable, so that is a really big plus. What I really like about her is she makes Amara so much better. Increases magic damage for e by each living goblin in the party, and then Amara gets the same thing. And Thanisa's magic damage is 25k, essentially, or 2500, essentially. So it's not anything to write home about, but giving herself that 10% per goblin is really, really nice. Then on her assistant, she calls two random allies to assist. That's awesome because it's two random allies. She can be plugged and played with any team. Really like that. And heals the target, the targeted ally right here by 900% of Denise's magic damage. So obviously if you're running her with goblets, that's going to be even better. And then puts on debuff immunity for two turns. That's really big in and of itself. And then she poisons the target. So she does have that, that synergy with poisons. A lot of people probably don't have Thanisa up and running, and you know, you can find her in the hero chest. So you get those keys from running the tournaments and things, pop them. Because I've actually gotten like 30 or 40 shards for her out of those hero chests that from all the keys they give us. So that, that's, a, that's a really big positive for me. So she is not farmable, but she is obtainable. But you really want to get her... I hit the wrong button. You really want to get her up as high star before you really start to use her. But you put her, like, with the Arno protecting her. Fantastic combination. You know, somebody like a Tromgar would be really good. That bleed team, if you put a really solid tank in there, phenomenal. 
or the poison team, I'm sorry, not bleed team. But she can do she can do a lot of things to really help out your team, and she is very, very plug and play viable. So that's why Denisa is 19. Number 17 comes in as Count Delman, and I just got Count Delman 7 star on my account. I've already had him at year 11. Pretty happy about that. And Count Delman is I I I like Count Delman. His viability outside of a party is there, but he, he really shines in that elf party. And the reason he is there is for that Mark of Death ability where he puts a ton up on somebody random. But you need to have a Dispeller with him because you don't want to waste that on the tank. The tank's already got the ton. You don't want to waste that. He is very, very beefy. His health and shield combination is only 49k, but for some reason he always seems to be one of the last people alive when I'm using him. His speed isn't terrible, it's not great, it's at 145, so middle of the pack there. So, you know, he does offer some things, but that mark of death is really what, what brings up the viability. It's the only real move in the game that does something like that, where you can, regardless of if they go invisible, whatever the case might be, they won't be able to because they have that mark of death, and that is really, really big. His um, passive ability gains 500 penetration. If Thalane is an ally, Count Delman and Thalane increase their physical damage by 15%. If Wonder Lua is an ally, Count Delman and Wonder Lua increase their crit chance by 15%. So you put him in that Thalane led comp with um, Wonder Lua, uh, Titania, and you can do some things for sure. You know, then here he's, he gives a dodge increase for two turns. Recovers 25% of a certain meter and all allies gain crit damage increase for two turns. Then he has his mark death and on his basic ability he has a 70% chance to increase the cooldown of a random ability. So, okay, I mean, it is what it is. But Count Delman just is a fantastic character. Really helps that elf faction. Very survivable, even though his stats kind of say he isn't. When you play with him, you'll understand. And that mark of death move makes him where he's at, so... That's why I like me some Count Delman. 17, Cruel. Cruel is just an exceptional character. Really, really hard, long farm, but she is so good for what she does. On her passive ability, she's well known for putting the mages under stealth. If you have three mages, they all go under stealth. Really helps the survivability of teams. Plug and play character. She has her Create Reflection, where you make like a mirror image of somebody, you know, if you play Marvel Strike Force, she is your, um, Mr. Sinister. And then she calls in that person to attack on her Eye on the Night, but then she also makes the defender go invisible, makes him drop that taunt, so it's a soft dispel, so that is awesome. And then her basic really isn't anything to write home about, but her Reflection recovers 70% of the damage dealt of the health so it is what it is if it, but it's got to be a demon so i really don't care for her passive but what else she brings to the table that create the reflection the the passive dispel the survivability for the mage comp without her you can't really do it and yeah i mean she does have some issues she is a slower character at 140 her health and shield combination is under 45k you can compensate for that with runes obviously but she is still just an exceptional, exceptional character. And start farming her every day because she is good. So, number 17, cruel. Number 16 is General Murdoch. And General Murdoch is the engine that makes that goblin team go. So, you might be saying, then why is he at 16? General Murdoch can be used outside the goblin comp, but if you don't have the goblin team to put within, General Murdoch is not as good nearly not as good as what he should be and you know or what his potential is so that's kind of why he's up the list a little more for me is outside of the goblin faction he's just i mean he can still be used don't get me wrong but he's just not as good now his leadership gives the counter attack he increases potency on his passive by 30 percent if there's any members of the order in the enemy party and then an extra 30 percent if there's elves so obviously there's going to probably be at least one order in there that's going to really help out. He does have the chance, 70% chance, to inflict slow for two turns on an AoE. He has, um, if they have slow, he decreases their turn meter by 50%. If the target is inflicted by a damage decrease, this ability calls a random ally into assist. 
and then he puts the damage decrease on his basic. So he, he does offer so much to this team and really aims it up and he's definitely a top 20 character. General Murdoch is awesome. He has pretty decent speed at 155. You know, for a legendary character, not bad at all. His health and shield combination is 51k, so that is awesome for his survivability. Crit chance is at 35%, so again, he's in the topper tier there. But his potency is only at 26%, so you really got to put some potency on this character if you want those debuffs to stick. If you don't care about that stuff, then you just build him fast and you do damage. But if you want those debuffs to stick, which you should because slow is very nice, damage decrease is nice for the survivability of a squishy team but again if you just take general murdoch out of the goblin comp itself he's just not as strong as a character as he is with them so that's i can't rank him higher than where he's at next up is freezard and yes i have freezard above general murdoch freezard's plug and play viability is better than that of general murdoch now general murdoch's lead is game changing for the goblin faction but Freezard is such a good champion. He carries you so hard in this game. Especially if you spend a dollar and get the guy. He makes Snorri viable. He has two AoEs. He's very good in that Solius comp. He is just a really, really good character. And you know, I I I went back and forth between Murdoch and Freezard and where should I put them? And if I had to just choose one of them. And you don't know who's going to be around them. Who are you taking? You're going to take Freezard because you can do more things with Freezard in the game than you could a General Murdoch, right? That's kind of my whole thought process behind this. And, you know, he has the slow on his A1. He has three enemy AoE with a 75% chance to inflict armor decrease. He has full AoE with decreased turn meter. And then he has the survives cheat death. Now, Freezard does have some problems, but potency isn't one of them. Usually it's 99 problems and potency's one, but potency isn't one. He starts at 41%, so you could put a potency set on this guy to decrease that turn meter. You know, you could up his survivability because his survivability and speed is really where those problems come into play. His speed is 150, not bad for a mage, but he always just seems to go a little bit slower, but I, I always built him for damage or crit chance, so that could be why. But his health and shield combination is only 37. Okay, so he is rather squishy, so that cheat death does come in handy. Now you put him in the Soleus lead with a Cruel in there and Night TL, and you got that three mage comp, and he's way more survivable. But I fought teams with Freezard, and he makes the difference in that fight. And I'm sure you have too. So that's why Freezard's where he's at. Next one on the list is Eric Shieldbreaker. And Eric Shieldbreaker, above Freezard, and he's above Murdoch. He's above Ember for his Rousing Cry. This Rousing Cry, he's meta because of this one solitary move. You can plug and play him with any team because it's allies. It's not order, it's not anything but allies. His Rousing Cry ability makes him a top 20 character easily. And people might argue they could even put him higher. When you're picking characters based on just that character alone, you get Rousing Cry to put up that debuff immunity for two turns on four people. Pretty insane. So it's yourself and four allies, right? I mean, that is that is huge, huge ability. He can do some damage. His passive gives himself 30% physical damage and then 5% for each living human in the party. Here, this move is kind of, it reads better than it actually is, but 390 physical damage, 30%, it goes against shield, and he gains a damage increase for two turns. Now, I wish that damage increase was gained off his basic, so you could use his basic first, and then come in and punish a little more with that move, but it is what it is, and of course he's penetrating shield because he's Eric Shieldbreaker. Now, he does have some glaring issues. 119 speed is just downright horrendous. Now, I got him in four dot epics and three dot blues and i am in the 197 but he starts at 119 that is just horrendous and my dogs shows the time to bark but anyways his health and shield combination is 40k so he is on the squishier side but 
you can use that rousing cry as your first move right off the bat. So that's the whole point you got in there. Put that up, and if he dies, he dies. But you, you can get his health and shield combination up if you choose to, but you're torn between this character of do you want him to be survivable, do you want him to be fast, do you want him to do damage? And to find that happy medium, you don't really get any benefit of all three of them. So I found running him with more damage, at least I get something else out of him besides that rousing cry, and if I make it to where he can put it back on, fantastic. If I can't, I can't. You know, um, his crit chance is 21.9%, so 22%, pretty, pretty brutal, you know. Um, he could definitely use a little bit of a rework overhaul there, and he doesn't need potency or anything like that, so all in all, the reason he's in the top 20 is that rousing cry, and I don't think you could argue that it's one of the best solitary moves in the game, for sure. Number 13 is Wonder Lua, and Wonder Lua has some really, really good plug-and-play viability underneath the right comps. There's plenty of characters that do better damage when they're under invisible, and she provides that. On her A3 ability, Cloak of Shadow, she gains invisibility, applies it to all allied healers, tacticians, and fighters for two turns. Really solid move. Her passive ability, I can't stand, increases physical damage by 20%. Like, Eric Shieldbreaker's 30, so why isn't she 30 as well? And I, I understand that she was nerfed when she first came out. She was one-shotting people. It was insane the amount of damage she was doing, and she still is one of the best damage dealers in the game. Her piercing shot is unbelievable. 300% physical damage and guaranteed a critical hit when she's invisible. So you could go crit chance, crit damage on that. And then her basic ability, um, 180 on the low side deals 225 physical damage if they have more health than her, which they generally do because she only has 18k health. This attack deals 50% more crit damage. So yeah, you know, I got to re-rune her. I still got her in two dot runes, so. You know, her speed is 174, fantastic, one of the highest speeds in the game, so you don't really have to focus on speed, and you can get her above that 200 with ease. Her health and shield combination, almost 44k, but she does need a little bit of that in the secondaries to, to bump you up. Um, her physical damage, 3200, one of the best in the game. Crit chance, 32%, I'll take that to start, good multipliers there, and you really don't need potency. So... She's just a nuker. You build her to be a nuker, and you let her nuke people, and you, you, you spread that invisibility out. She's vital under the Thalane lead. She's just such a good character. Even with that nerf, she's top 20 for me. People tell me I overrank Wonder Lua, but she has won me so many fights and tournaments that she's my girl. So there is Wonder Lua at 13. Number 12 is Dr. Frank. Dr. Frank is an exceptional character. You can use him really in any comp you want because he can overheal those shields, which just makes him invaluable. And, you know, his passive ability, if a goblin attacks an enemy with shock, another random goblin is called into assist. So that kind of goes away if you don't put him with goblins. But this healing charge, he restores 350 of Frank's magic damage to shields to all allies and restores health to all allies equivalent to 50% of this the restored shield. And that shield can just stack and stack and stack and stack. So if you put him behind a couple tanks, forget it. Then he has an AoE where he has 300 magic damage to all enemies. And then he can put on days if they have shock on his basic. He's just so well built. His speed is low at 139. His health and shield combination a little bit lower at 46k. But the fact that he can over shield it just makes him survivable. You could really use Dr. Frank in any team that you're looking for, like that off full heal or just somebody who can do a little bit of damage and can keep your team alive. He's your guy. He, he's just so good. His kit, every move benefits another move. Just It's just really well built, really well put together character. You know, you can get him up to 206. I have him at 206, you can get him over that 200 mark fairly easy, you can you can get him way higher, you can get him up to 215, 220, without, without god tier runes, you can do it, but he's just so well built, 
he deserves to be in this in this area for me 100 percent and there's not much more i can say about dr frank but start farming him as soon as you can and to finish this video off at number 11 is soleus soleus falls out of the top 10 and this was really tough for me because if somebody said you're wrong soleus is a top 10 character i i would listen to your argument because he could very well be if this was a early game tier list he'd be number one you get Soleus, this game gets so much easier. But as you get towards that end game, Soleus falls off a little more. His human team used to be pretty much damn near unbeatable unless you took a mirror match up against it. Now you have the Zara lead who can take it out. I beat I beat one the other day in um, Battlegrounds with a pride lead. With Boris and Kagi, Salvador, Renara. So it can be done. It's just you know, he, he's not as powerful as he once was. He still is early game, mid game, so, so good. You, you couldn't ask for anybody better, and making him free to play is just amazing. I mean, his speed is very solid to start at 155. His health and shield combination is almost 53k to start. That is phenomenal, right? I mean, his magic damage, I want to say it's a little bit lower. Yeah, a little bit under 3k, or 300, 3,000. I could talk but you know his move kit is so solid he, the best leader for humans by far gives him a chance to counter attack he increases all order magic and physical damage by 25 percent passive ability i mean just just really really well done the synergy with night tl is amazing he has his ammo's uh, blessing where he puts on the armor increase tenacity haste damage cheat death and then he heals him and he has his mass heal for 550. And then his basic calls Night Yell into assist. 15% chance to restore one turn of a random Oh, excuse me. Random ability. I mean, he he's just really, really good, but as the game is progressing, he's slowly falling out of that endgame tier, and that's why I had to slowly bump him down out of the top ten. I mean, you're starting a team. There's only 10 other characters in this game I would take over Soleus. And again, if you tell me Soleus should be a top 10 character, I'm not going to argue with you. But the other 10 characters in the next video, I would take over Soleus. They give me more. Especially in the end game. But Soleus is just so damn good. And you should continue to work for him as soon as you can get him. Get him as fast as you can in the early game, and the rest is a breeze. So... Soleus number 11. So there it is my YouTube family. There is 20 through 11 of my worst to first. We have one more to do and it'll be coming out probably the day after you watch this. So with that being said, let me know in this video what you think and I this will be the last video to enter the account coaching and I want you to use Soleus in one of the comments and talk to me about your favorite Soleus memory right my favorite soleus memory was i unlocked him with a terrible team when the game first came out and then that's kind of when my youtube channel took off is i kind of walked people through how to unlock soleus and by mean take off i think i went from like 60 subscribers to like 120 so for me that was a big jump and that's why I'll always remember Soleus. That was the first time we had like a legendary event and it was very, you had to think about it and it was so RNG based. It was a pain in the butt and I tried to get it and record it and then I was doing something and I was like, you know what, I'm just gonna try one more time. And of course I unlocked it. So <laughs> that's my memory of Soleus. So let me know your memory of Soleus in the comments below if you wanna enter that account coaching giveaway. With that being said, if you're just finding me for the first time, and you're liking what you're seeing, click that subscribe button, join the XMG family, and for my XMG family members out there, you know I love you. See you on the next one. I'm out.